Well, happy Wednesday night, everybody. It's great to be with you uh, tonight. Uh, Bob Ray and I, John Shackelford, are going to be taking us on another study uh, of the heart disease class that was started last week with our brother David Love and Bill Collette. Uh, in this series, we are going to be taking a look at solutions from God's Word that help us overcome all the foes of happiness and peace of mind. In addition, uh, we're going to learn how to live the Christian life and to grow towards spiritual maturity by correcting and or improving our basic attitudes toward life and our fellowship. You know, it's, it's really interesting to see that as we've come through the last month, we've had an opportunity to come together uh, in some more focused dialogue now from God's Word that talks to us in the areas that we're showing here. And over the next weeks, we have the joy of bringing to you uh, classes on things like heart conditions that need to be overcome. Last week, Bill and David talked about unforgiveness. This week, Bob and I are going to talk about overcoming envy. And just right down the line, things like, oh, how do I overcome ingratitude or selflessness, uh, harsh judgments, fault finding, discontent, pride and arrogance. And continuing on into the months, we're going to be talking about overcoming doubt and disbelief and distrust overcoming fear, worry and pessimism, discouragement and frustration, impatience and prejudice. And all of this is focused on making us a Christian, passionate follower of Christ so that we can go to God's Word and learn together how to overcome some of these heart conditions. And in doing that, we're going to try to follow tonight Bob and I have particularly set up to take you on a journey of overcoming envy. We're going to talk about what it is. We're going to talk about where it operates and the effects that envy can have on our life. And then we're going to dig into God's Word and learn what God's Word says about envy and how to overcome it. And then we have a few discussion questions, if we have time, that we will close the night with. So. Sit back, get your Bible out, and, and get ready to enjoy uh, a study tonight on overcoming envy. And Bob's going to first talk to us about just what is envy. Yeah, so let's, um, one of the things Shaq and I discussed uh, that we want to start the class off with is kind of looking at what envy is, what jealousy is, and, and whether there's a difference. So when we take a look at envy, uh, it is to want something which belongs to another person, Discontent at the excellence or good fortune of another. Envy is resentful. Envy is the feeling that any honor done for another is a dishonor to me. Or you shall not covet your neighbor's house, his wife, or his servant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So as we go into this now, we hope that you will start thinking based on these definitions have you experienced envy lately does the feeling that you have come into context with these definitions about wanting something that some other person has or oh bob really had some great luck he got three free cruises and i didn't get any <laughs> uh, I'm very resentful of that. Uh, envy is the feeling that any honor done for another is a dishonor for me. Well, yeah, I finished fourth uh, at the golf tournament and I didn't miss, I missed the putt and therefore Bob got a bigger trophy than I did. Now, those are examples of envy. Is there a difference between envy and jealousy? And depending on what version, translation you go to, 
in the Bible, you will see envy and jealousy interchanged. But I think it's important that we highlight that there is some difference between jealousy and envy. For example, jealousy is the fear that something that we own or something that we possess will be taken away by another person. Jealousy more often refers to anxiety, which comes when we are afraid that the affections of a loved one might be lost to a rival. We fear that our mates or perhaps our children will be lured away by some other person who compared to us seems to be more attractive, capable, or successful. Think about those subtle differences as we go through our lesson tonight. Envy, where do we find it? How does it operate? And we go straight to the scriptures and these we refer you to, and please don't hesitate to jot them down, take pictures of the slides that you're seeing on your screen so that you can go back and reflect on these scriptures uh, during the week. We have first up from Proverbs 27, and the verse is 4. It says, Anger is cruel, and wrath is like a flood, but jealousy, or envy, is even more dangerous. So, notice in Proverbs, envy is classified as being worse than wrath or anger. We're blasted by anger and swamped by rage, but who can survive envy or jealousy? Bob, I never realized before we studied this that in fact envy is classified as being worse than wrath or anger. Up next, you'll see that envy is likened to cancer of the bone, and that's from what? Proverbs? The chapter is 14 and the verse is 30. And it says, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. As malignancy to the bones and leprosy to the flesh, so is envy to our spiritual self. Oh my word. Envy is compared to cancer of the bone. And here we are, we, we are, as I refer to many times, Bob, the old dog here. Uh, I'm concerned that now tonight I've just learned that envy, if I let it get into my heart, that it's likened to cancer of the bone. And I'm, I'm like, whoa, I need to be not so protective of what my physical condition is, but what my heart condition is. And that's why I think tonight's lesson we're looking at curing some heart conditions and this one of envy, it just really hits me in the face that talks about it's worse than wrath or anger and it's likened to having bone cancer. And then next up, it says from James 3 and 14 and 15 that envy is earthly and sensual and devilish. It can be the motive of doing a good thing, provided the good thing could result in something bad happening in the life of one being envied. Oh my word, you mean to tell me that I would be envious by wishing something good would result in something bad happening to my friend or my brother? Uh, that pretty well puts this definition of where we can find envy luring itself through the devil coming into our life. So again, look at this. Envy is worth than wrath or anger. Envy is likened to bone cancer. And envy is earthly, sensual, and devilish, especially <clears throat> if we, it becomes the motive of doing a good thing provided the good thing results in something bad. That's just powerful uh, admonition, I think, to all of us. Noticed also I found over in Isaiah 11 and verse 13, Bob, that 
uh, envy is not confined to any segment of society. It can happen in the church, such as Ephraim can envy Judah, as noted in Isaiah 11, 13, or it can happen outside the church in Titus 3 and 13. So we have other areas where envy operates, and we have to be mindful of this. Envy can be associated with backbiting, rumor mongering, strife, and wrath. And I've noted in those two scriptures there, 2 Corinthians 12 and 20 and Romans 1, 29, 1 Corinthians 3 and 1 through 3. Be careful about your he said, she said, they said. Hey, Bob, did you know what so-and-so said about you? You got to be careful about letting that motivation of backbiting or rumor or throwing anger in front of your words. You got to be careful because that's an indication of envy operating in you. Envy is also associated with adultery and fornication, witchcraft, hate, murder, and drunkenness. And we have to be very careful because envy is alive and well in the, work we're, in the world we're living in. Church members, unfortunately, uh, thank the Lord that it's not manifest in any of the relationships that we've seen, but in other places in my military career, I have seen where church members became envious of one another. Uh, surely not displayed here, but we've read in some of our studies about church staff that envy one another based on their positions or based on their salaries or their ability to speak or their ability to have followers. Thankfully, none of that's going on here in this congregation, and I hope where you are that it's not going on with you. And certainly, congregations becoming envious of one another. Oh, you know, we have uh, 800 more people in our auditorium than the neighboring church. That's the kind of stuff that Satan wins and God loses when something like that happens. Please, church, watch out for this little word, four letters, that can throw disgust and turmoil into your life in terms of letting envy get in the way. Yeah, and you know, before you go on any yeah. further, um, <clears throat> one of the things I'd never considered before, Shaq, is when you really look at that Proverbs 14.30, I'd never read it like that before. Uh -huh. um, we're talking about conditions of the heart. We're talking specifically about the body there um, to some degree. And um, the one thing when you think about cancer, as, as bad as the disease as it is, is it spreads. Oh. And when you talk about wrath and anger, you know, they're kind of one-time type things, but that envy, being cancer, it's almost saying, just be careful about that because it's not only you, but then that could spread to those around you. Uh, and just like you were talking about other congregations wow. or something, so. What a great point. Yeah. Be careful. Okay, so let's look next at now that we've identified what it is, where you can find it and how it operates, let's look at the effect based on the Bible verses. And again, these are for your edification and further study. But we saw because of envy and jealousy, Cain killed Abel. And you see the reference there. We also the story that you learned very early in our life was about how Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. And we have to be careful, and again, that we are not envious of our fellow brothers and sisters. Next yeah. up, Saul hunted David like he would hunt a wild animal seeking to kill him, take his life. You had a comment? No, I was just going to okay. say, when you go down through these, these five points here, and I don't want to get too far ahead of you, but um, the impact of envy, it's not just a condition that impacts you and your relationship with God, but it impacts those around you oh. as well. Because you look at each one of these, these stories, and it's, it's not necessarily the in, individual that has the envy, but it's mm -hmm. somebody around them that's paying the, the consequences of mm -hmm. it. Take a look at that. I mean, it's not just 
one-on-one. -on -one. This is a group. Look, brothers, apostles, the crowd, all engaged, and you see from those scriptures the effects of envy. So, once again, take a picture, jot them down, or come back in uh, when we're not taking the, the uh, video here. But those scriptures are there to show you the importance of avoiding envy because this is the effect that you will have on you. Next up, we talk about what does God's word say about envy. And as you all know, I'm a fan of the New International Version, and then I carry alongside of it the message. And this is one that just jumped right out at me last week when we were getting ready for this. It says, from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, Clean your house. <laughs> Make a clean sweep of malice and pretense, envy and hurtful talk. You've had a taste of God. Now, like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you'll grow up mature and whole in God. Wow. Be careful. Don't let this feeling of jealousy or envy, backbiting, rumor control, rumor mongering, don't let it come into your house. Clean it up. Make the clean sweep of pretense and hurtful talk. Be careful, church, that you heed the warning here from 1 Peter 2 and 1 and 3. You've enjoyed drinking God's pure kindness. Let's grow up and mature and be whole in God. Next up, we have... Galatians 5 and 25 through 26. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure that we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts, but let's work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means we'll not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each one of us is an original. Wow, think about that. We are advised, we're commanded not to be envious of one another. Why? Because we're each unique. Bob, I am so happy that I am fat and balder than <laughs> you are. It just makes me so happy to know that I'm unique, that I'm one of God's originals. And each one of you with us tonight is same way. You are an individual. And there's no room for us to let this comparison of one another get in the way of a clean walk and an exciting service with God. Okay? <clears throat> Next up, we are to put aside envying. We have Romans 13 and 13 and 14. Right here, if I can get my slides to work. My bad. Bear with me. Put aside envying. Make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-to-day -day stuff, your obligations, that you lose track of time and doze off oblivious to God. The night is about over, dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to do what God is doing. God's putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around in dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed, get dressed. 
Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ. Be up and about. Whoa! We don't have time to be bickering, and we don't have time to be in awe and, oh, I wished I had what you had mode. No. Satan, again, wins when we do that. Let's put aside everything and come together and be excited about the opportunities that we have to serve. Even during COVID times, we are still able to reach out through means that we're using tonight and also to come together and encourage each other through our contact ministries. We have so many different ways that we don't have time to worry about what somebody else has better than we do. We need to get on with getting out of bed and getting dressed, not to loiter and linger worrying about somebody else. Let's be excited about being unique in God's <clears throat> kingdom. We must also avoid all of this envy and associated drunkenness, if that's one of the things that challenges you, or any other sin. Just as in Galatians letter said, I warn you as I did before that those who live like this, that is, live in sin, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let's beware because these are the scriptures that God has provided us to help us stay away from envy. So, here are some medicines to cure your heart if envy is one of those sins that's burdening you. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3. Grow up, deepen your spirituality, and become mature. We must put on Christ, and they that put him on, then we must strive to live as he lived. And when we do that, this sin of envy will do, be dissipated and destroyed. Secondly, we overcome envy by walking in the Spirit. As Paul said, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, Galatians 5 and 16. We need to be Spirit-led, church. We need to example Christ's influence in all of our actions, and then envy will be overcome. Here's a tough one for me, putting self aside. Crucify self. Practice self-denial. Don't let envy exist because of pride and selfishness. Never lose sight of the fact that we're in the presence of God and are members of the same body. 1 Corinthians 12 and 26. Courage is the very opposite of fear, and fear is eliminated or eradicated by the Lord's presence. And here's one that the shoe fits right on me. <laughs> I need to ask for God's help more often, and I would encourage all of us in the listening audience tonight to recognize God is there for us and all we have to do is ask his help. God's grace is necessary in all of our adventures of overcoming envy. Bottom line, there are scriptural guidance monitor monitors out there that allow us to come into God's word and to overcome envy. And I hope that in this lesson that you will take these scriptures and let them just, you look at them, meditate on them, and then think about putting them in the, in the practice. Pray more. Ask the Spirit to lead you and guide you more. Let's become more Christ-like through our love for each other rather than spending time concerned about you have more than I do or he's getting all the lucky things and I'm sitting here having a pity party it, it just doesn't work that way Bob so now we have some time for some discussion questions 
And the first one up is, how envy can hamper the Lord's work. What do you think? Well, <clears throat> this led right into what I was thinking as you were going through this, because okay. you brought up Romans about uh, loiter and linger. And what I was thinking about was the master's away right now. There's only so many hours in the day, so many days in a week, so many weeks in a year. Um, and every moment that we spend um, focused on these conditions of the heart, specifically uh -huh. envy, okay. takes away from moments that we could be doing the Lord's work. Ah. So. Oh, and wow. what, what is the master going to say when he returns? Uh, specifically, if we have spent time envying others uh, and or creating discord in the church through envy or, uh -huh. or other situations. Wow. But it can certainly hamper the Lord's work because it takes your focus away from what we need to be doing. Um, puts it on something that is, is sinful. Great. Great thought. So let's be thoughtful and mindful as we go through the rest of this week, church, about if you let envy take over, how is that hampering your ability to do God's work? And let's be about overcoming envy and being more engaged in doing God's work. Next up, what are your thoughts on this phrase? Envy can never be the motive for doing a good work. Whoa. If I could just get more involved, I could do a better work. Well, Bob has a job that I really want. I'm jealous because they asked him to do this job and I didn't get to do it. Therefore, uh, he's doing a good work, but I just wish it was me. Uh, we need to be careful of that. Uh, I hope that if you're feeling called to do great work, that you'll let us elders know, hey, you're ready to get involved in doing this. It's not because it's Bob doing it or Rudolph doing it. It's because you want to do it. And envy better not be the reason that you're wanting to do it. It needs to be a call from God that you want to get engaged. And by the way, there are so many jobs available <laughs> at, at our congregation. Please step up. As, as Neil challenged us all on Sunday, and get out of the boat and just let it be known that, that you want to work and, and do more. And the last one, what are your thoughts about James 3, 14 and 15? But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual and demonic. What are your thoughts on that one? But if you harbor envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Fortunately, as I said from the beginning, I have not seen or felt this attitude from our congregation. I, I just have not been able, and I certainly don't go around looking for it, but I'm, I'm complimenting the Christ followers in our congregation that there's not a noticeable bitter envy or selfish ambition in the flock that I shepherd. And I hope that if you spot that somewhere, that you would go to that brother or sister and, and remind them of the admonition here in James 3, 14 and 15. So I think it's important that we are aware that we are not to be selfish and that we're not to be wishing bad upon those that are being successful. It's just one of those things where we want to be about God's work and not the devil's work. Any comments? Well, you, <clears throat> you look at both of those scriptures or that scripture and then the, the verse, the discussion point above it. Um, and if you look at who the focus is on, the focus is not on God. The focus is not on Jesus. Uh -huh. uh, in both of those, we're taking the focus off of where it should be 
placing it on ourselves so that we're uplifted and we're glorified um, instead of God who should be glorified through our works and our lives. That's awesome. Okay, Wednesday night class. Uh, that's our offering tonight on the heart condition called envy and jealousy. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed our, our chats together tonight and the scriptures that we provided are beneficial for you to go back into and to pull forward and to be excited about now we know what envy is, we know what it looks like and where it comes into our lives and most importantly that we got scripture that talks to us about overcoming envy. We hope that you will uh, continue prayerfully uh, encouraging each other and most of all that soon, soon, soon that we'll, able, we'll be able to come back together and be excited about being in Bible class again. I know Bob and I would love to see faces mm. sitting out here instead of these blue chairs uh, that we can't see facial expressions on. That's it for tonight. Uh, on behalf of the elders and the ministers, and we and the deacons, we want you to know that we love you and let us never forget what? God's got it. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> <laughs>